This is Sean with Gate City Foundation Drainage. We're on a job today outside of Greensboro and this is a friend of mine and he has got a backed up leach field. So look at what's going on here. So according to the schematic, the leach field comes out and it like goes this way and then it comes back around and goes that way. So the plan here is to and there's there's a there's a blockage somewhere in here the plan is to get a new set of chambers going that way and then also try to hook into this old leg of it so we have the best of both so that's the plan today we've got some low profile chambers with us about 40 feet and the first first thing we need to do today is find what we're looking for here find the leach field so that's what we're working on today So in their infinite wisdom, whoever poured this patio before my friend bought the place poured it right on top of the septic tank. And so they had to, to cut the, the concrete and find the tank. They got it pumped. And I just want to get in there and make sure that thing has a baffle on it before we go through all this trouble. So let's see how we do. Be right. well, I can't tell you from the bathroom or not. What in the world? That's a bad situation because he's clogged. Yeah, the leach field is clogged. You guys are familiar with using a hose to suck water out, right? Yeah, you gotta. Who's on a suction in there, boss? In. You gotta start the <laughs> suction and once it gets going, get out of the way. Yep. Yeah, but don't taste the gas. You, you know how to that. you know how to start the suction on this? Honestly, without a pump, no. I'll show you. Is there a way circle you have? Oh yeah, I'll show you. Learn me something, bro. Yep, I'm gonna learn you something. Learn me something. Alright, so I am assuming we need Alright, so we need to suck this water out of here. And so we're gonna use a garden hose to do that. And let me show you how. Jeremy's asking to see if he's gonna have to establish suction on that end. Jeremy, look, come on up here. Let me show you how this works. Alright. So we're going to use physics here. Okay. We make sure that other valve is open on that oh, connection. Oh, I got you, yep. boss. Let's see what you're going to do. Must be one of our parallel or perpendicular? Uh, parallel. Run with the line. Alright, so what we're doing here is filling this hose up with water. You got water? Yep. Alright. Now I'm going to turn it off, close the valve. And now that hose is full of water, so when we place it in here and open it, we should get some suction going on. You ready? Yep. You good? Can't do it with one hand. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got you. It's got to be underwater. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jeremy, is any water coming out? Yeah, we have flow. Okay, can you pull it tight? Maybe not super tight, but a little bit better than what it is here. It's pretty slick yet, Captain. You like that? I like that. Smart. You taught me something. There you go. <laughs> Never. The homeowner had put a tarp over this opening here, but it still got full of rainwater, and so we had to siphon this water out of here so that we could then open up the leach field without all this water just flowing into where we were working. We do have a gas line over here coming from a gas tank in the backyard. So I did locate that. The batteries just died on my receiver thing there. So we're getting some new ones, but it looks like it's running out along here and over. So we're going to cross it 
but we'll have to deal with that when we get to it. So for now, it looks like we're clear to start digging around over here. One problem we had here was we did not know how deep the leach field was. And so I was taking a couple small scoops with the bucket on the excavator and then the guys were kind of probing around a little bit. And then I would go back and take another scoop. And those low profile chambers that I got, it turns out those were not the right ones. So I went back and got the regular ones. But really on a job like this where you don't know what you're getting into, getting started is really the hardest part. It's going down. It's going to be a little while. Unless we you know, start digging our ditch and let it flow out. And that's going to take a few yeah, hours. Yeah, it went way down. Yeah, it's dropping. Oh, yeah. Here we have finally hit and found the leach field and so whatever residual water was backed up in the leach field and whatever extra water was in the septic tank is now draining into this, this hole that we just dug because we opened up the leach field. And so luckily I brought the trenching or ditching bucket which works really well for bailing out the ditch. So I just moved this water over into a natural wooded area where it can percolate back into the ground. Okay, this is where we are at. I hate to have to hook on to this pipe because that's a perforated pipe, which is part of the leach field. But the solid pipe is underneath the patio somewhere. And I think it's a double chamber septic tank, which is what it's supposed to be here in North Carolina. And so, ah, I guess we're just gonna hook on to it here. And we still have some leach field out this way, so I do want to dig across here and try to find it so we can hook onto both of them. The new one going this way and the old one. So I guess I'm going to start digging across here and see if I can find anything. I, I just hate digging like this, but it's called Forrest Gump digging. You never know what you're going to hit. So I guess I'm going to get started. We dug this way a little bit and we did find the other side of the leach field. So apparently the leach field comes out and it like goes over here and then it comes back and then it goes this way. So we were hoping to hook onto it here and and because this is still working and continue to use this part of the leach field and then we're going to add in our chambers across here. We're going to use a piece of solid 4 inch PVC as a header to go across from our outlet right there by the septic tank over to and connect back to the old existing section of the leach field. And then once we get that together, we're going to get on the other side and start digging our trench for our new chambers.
Okay, we the bubbles just just, just is breaking the line on this side, so we're flowing. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. So when the when the homeowner had this septic guy come out, this is what he recommended doing. This part of the leach field going that way is clogged. This part going this way is not clogged. So the guy recommended that we just hook this in to this existing leach field. The problem with that is it gets rid of all the capacity of the leach field in that area. And so we're still going to hook this in, but we're also going to take our chambers that way. So not only are we we're hooking into the old system and we're deading and killing some of the old system, but we're adding also. So I think this is going to work really well. Okay, Ronald spent a bunch of time getting this pipe really, really, really well bedded. So you can jump up and down on that and it doesn't move. The reason we do that is, oh, there you go. The reason we do that is because we're going to be adding a bunch of dirt on top of it and we've got the pipe where we want it. So we don't want it to move. So as I start grabbing big, huge piles of dirt in here, that pipe's not going to move because we spent so much time bedding it. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. One thing you will notice in this video is anytime I'm covering a septic system back up, I make sure I'm not compacting it. And so I think it, it works a lot better if you let septic systems, because they're so deep for one thing, I like to let the dirt settle naturally and slowly. And so I'm going to leave a huge mess over here and the, the dirt just piled way up. And so give it a couple, three months probably, and then I'll be back over here doing some finish grading. And so I really like that septic system to settle naturally and slowly over time instead of just compacting the heck out of it. And I think it's going to work a lot better. And then, of course, the customer knows that I'll be back over there to do the finish grading in a few months. This fitting right here is called a double sanitary T, and I want to show you how it works here in a second. So let me start by showing you how a regular sanitary T works and why we're going to use a double in this application. So we're taking the corrugated from the tank and we're going to split it between this new leg or this old leg of the septic system, the leach field, and then the new leg that we're going to do. A sanitary T here. What this does is it basically lets the water, if you, if you see how that is formed in there, that's going to direct the water in one way or another. The double sanitary tee here, take a look. See how it is formed right there? It's going to split the water. And so that's going to split our effluent, effluent into both legs of the leach field. So that's why we're using a double sanitary tee. Now that's a very expensive fitting right there but I do carry a couple of them for this kind of thing. How's it going, Sean? I don't think it's gonna work. No? Shit. Jeremy and Ronald got this double sanitary tee in and that wants to be perfectly level right there so that the water, when it comes in there, it'll go both directions. I'm going to start working on getting the trench dug for the chamber system. And so I've got it roughly laid out. And the chambers are a little bit bigger than my bucket, so I'm just going to go for it. And hopefully I can get this done. So that's where we're at. Okay, we pulled the level of the tank down a little bit, so we're going to be back here in the morning. <clears throat> and any water they use tonight shouldn't fill the tank up, so we shouldn't have any more water coming out of here, hopefully. Keep the fingers crossed for us. So we were going to use those low profile chambers, but we're deep enough here that we can use regular chambers. So I'm going to swap out those other chambers 
and get the regular ones back. So we could theoretically be digging this trench right now, but I think I'd rather have the chambers where they want to be so we can get our laser set up and have it going the right way. So we're going to be back here tomorrow. We are back out here. It's the next day and we got a little bit of rain last night. So I've got a little bit of water to bail out of the trench right here. And we've got the right chambers. These are the larger ones. So we're going to put these in since we're so deep and we have the, the space for it. Okay, we got our first cap on, our inlet cap. That's all where it's supposed to be. And so now what we need to do is get this cleared out of here and get our laser in here and get our measurements for our height. We spent a bunch of time getting this cap and this first chamber set where we wanted it. So Ronald was in the trench most of the time. And once we get that first chamber in, then we have a height for our laser. And we want this, this entire run of, of chambers to be pretty much level so that the entire surface will accept water. And so just getting this first part uh, set and started was the hardest part. Once we got that, we have one guy laying chambers and one guy with a laser and me digging and it goes really quick.
Okay, we just got our last piece in and our end cap. So now what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna put an inspection tube here, which is basically just a clean out. And so this is a chamber system. Let me jump down in here. So these go in really, really fast. And in North Carolina, North Carolina gives you two feet of credit. So every one foot of chamber that we have here is equivalent to two feet of traditional gravel and perforated pipe. So we just added on a little bit in here to increase the capacity. We did run into the old bed a couple times. It just kind of snakes around. And so any gravel, you see this gravel right here? That's the old leach field right there. And so that will just continue to work if the water gets up in there at all. That'll continue to work. So I'm anxious to see what you all think about this. This is kind of a repair job. So, you know, we did things a little bit differently than if we were putting in a brand new system. This was also, we were trying to save the homeowner from having to tear up the whole yard. And remember what I was saying, the, the, the septic guy was saying just to do this right here, hook into the old system, because this part right in here of the leach field was clogged. My recommendation was to do that, but also add another one. And so we just increased his capacity quite a bit here. So I'm pretty excited about it. That's going to be our inspection port now. All right, I'm over here digging a little bit and I wanted to show you this is a cicada nymph. And what these guys do is they go underground, they find a tree root and they latch onto it and they suck the tree juices. And so depending on the species, some of them come out every, every year. Some of them like the periodical cicada come out once every 17 years. So different species, different intervals, but uh, I don't know what species this is, but this guy, we just disrupted him, so he's not happy. Okay, we're at the point now where we're ready to start covering. So it's Ronald's favorite part. Hi. The homeowner, my buddy, asked if I was gonna use the machine to push us back in the trench. And I told him I was gonna let him borrow my shovel but I was gonna leave my machine parked right here and he could go ahead and fill it in for me. <laughs> now we're gonna use a machine. I'm right here at the corrugated pipe. This is the old system. And it just occurred to me that maybe we don't wanna cover this up with dirt. It was surrounded by gravel as a leach field before, so we're going to grab a couple of buckets of gravel and put around it just because if that corrugated gets crushed, everything we did is for nothing. So we're going to put some gravel around it. Yep. All right, that'll, that'll help to protect that corrugated pipe. I'm doing a pretty good job getting this trench filled in. Now, the instructions for this chamber system says you can cross it perpendicular like this with the machine, but what you can't do is run parallel with it. So I'm gonna be crossing it here in a second. All right, we're finished for now. We've got this propane line right here that we hit. And so I've got a buddy who's going to come over here. He wants to braze this back together. And then there's the other side right there. 
so I was going to use some flare fittings. I was talking to my buddy who does heating and air and runs the gas line all the time. He said, no, no, no. He said, you want to braze it. He said, just in case you don't want propane leaking underground and leaking away all your propane on you. So we'll be back over here, hopefully in the morning to finish this up. But for now, I'm going to go take a look at that tree that he wants to pull down. He's got this tree here that's leaning. So he was going to put a winch on the bottom here and pull it out from under it. But since I've got the excavator here, we're going to see how we do. Might damage a mailbox or two. Yeesh. Keep it away from All right, I'm back out here. They just got this gas line replaced or repaired. And I guess they had to do a, a test on it and make sure everything was good before we could get cleared to cover this back up. So we've been cleared to cover it back up. And so that's what I'm gonna do today. Okay, I'm finished for now. So I'm going to leave it just like this and we're going to let this settle for probably a couple months. It might be tempting to run this machine all up and down it and, and compact the heck out of it. But I really like to let these things settle slowly and naturally. And so the homeowner's not worried about it. He's going to put up a little fence to keep the dogs off the mud, but he's got like two more acres back here. And so we'll be back out here in a couple months with the mini Bobcat and the Harley rake to get this all smoothed back out the way it's supposed to be. And we did flatten this out around the inspection port. And so I'm going to predict this will be a crater when we get back here from all the settling. So we'll be back here at some point. I'm all loaded up here and I'm off to do, got a couple quotes to go do today. And they're nearby here so i'm just gonna take all this with me so we'll be back out here to do that finish grading in a couple months this was definitely an interesting job working with septic systems so this was actually a friend of mine a scuba friend of mine so all this scuba stuff up here he's been on a lot of these trips with me and so he was telling me that he was having problems with the septic tank or the septic system i guess and the tank was under the patio. So he spent a bunch of time fooling around with that, found the tank, got the concrete cut, found it. And then we were on a trip together recently and he said, yeah, his he had a septic guy out there and the leach field they determined was, was clogged up. And so I said, you know, I can come out there 
and fix it for him. And so I went out there based on what I was seeing with the probe and looking at it, I suspected the leech field was pretty shallow. And so that's why I showed up on the first day with those low profile chambers, but those weren't right. So once we did find the leech field, we realized that we needed the standard chambers. So I had to take those back. It took an extra day, but that's okay because the standard ones have, do have a lot more capacity. And so we added 40 feet of chamber and like I said, North Carolina gives you two feet of credit for every one foot of chamber with these installs and you don't need any gravel. They work really, really well. So obviously this being a repair and the conditions we had with the patio in there, I wasn't able to replace the pipe from the tank to our double sanitary tee. Obviously I would have liked to have done that. It would have been a little bit better to not have that corrugated, but short of ripping up the patio and the whole backyard, we pretty much got the best we could out of it. So they've been using it for a while, haven't had any more problems. The tank would instantly fill up before now it's been quite a while, hasn't had any problems. So I'll go ahead and end the video here, but I will, I will be revisiting this job in, in probably about three months or so with the mini skid to, to do our final finish grading, seating and strawing and completely finish off that backyard. It may be tempting to just run the excavator over that and flatten it out so it looks flat when I leave but that's not going to work very well. So I really like that system to, to gently and, and slowly and naturally settle where it wants to instead of trying to force it. So we'll be back out there in a few months. But until then, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.